Hello. In this video, I'm going to solve the following problem for you. Let A and B be real numbers such that A times sine of 160 degrees equals to B times cosine of 340 degrees. Express this fraction A times sine of 1010 degrees plus B times cosine of 290 degrees all over a times sine of 610 degrees plus B times cosine of 470 degrees in terms of A and B. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do your calculations correctly, the final answer to the problem will be A squared minus B squared all over A squared plus B squared. Uh, okay, so let us solve the problem. We have given a piece of information here. We want to use this so that I can express this fraction in terms of only A and B, nothing else. Okay, so usually the experience you should have for solving these problems. Here, the information is given in terms of the angles 160 degrees, which is in the second quadrant, and 340 degrees, which is in the fourth quadrant. Okay, that would be a good idea if I try to write them, rewrite the same expression, but in terms of angles in the first quadrant, this will help me to organize my thoughts and try to understand that how can I connect this fraction to those angles. Yes, so let me tell you what I mean. So one hundred sine of 160 degrees, yes, if you have a little bit of experience in the trigonometry of unit circle, you immediately realize that this angle 160 degrees and 340 degrees are somehow related to the angle 20 degrees from the first quadrant. Why? Because 160 degrees can be viewed as sine of 180 degrees minus 20 degrees but then this is called the supplementer this is the supplement to 20 degrees yes that's the meaning so this means that sine of an angle is equal to the sine of its supplement so it becomes sine of 20 degrees so instead of working with 160 degrees i can work with 20 degrees only what about cosine so cosine of 340 degrees that's also not hard to see. It is connected to 20 degrees, but 360 degrees. So cosine of 340 degrees can be viewed as cosine of 360 degrees minus 20 degrees. But you know that the period of cosine is 360 degrees, so I can simply eliminate this, and it becomes cosine of minus 20 degrees. But you know that cosine of a negative angle is equal to the cosine of the positive angle. So this becomes equal to cosine of 20 degrees. So instead of having this as my information, I can immediately see that instead of this, I can put sine of 20 degrees. And instead of this, I can put cosine of 20 degrees. So I can write this assumption in terms of 20 degrees. Okay, that's a good progress. Because instead of at least working with two different angles, I can work with one angle, and that's 20 degrees. Okay, now this also gives me a hint how to continue. So it shows that it is a good idea if I can connect all these angles in this fraction to 20 degrees. So it gives me a strategy how to continue, and that is very valuable when it comes to solving math problems. Okay, so let us do that. Uh, let me do it here on this part of the board for each one of them. I have four of these. I want to connect these to the trigonometric functions of 20 degrees. So, sine of 1010 degrees. It's not hard to see that I can write it as 3 times 360 degrees. Okay, 3 times 360 degrees is what? Is uh, 1080 degrees but my angle is 1010 degrees, so I have to subtract 70 degrees from it. Why this is good? Because this angle was so big, I try to make it a small, then I will think about how to connect that small angle produced uh, to the angle 20, okay? So the period of sine is also 360 degrees, so I go three full rounds, it doesn't matter, I can eliminate this minus 70 degrees left, so it becomes sine of minus 70 degrees, but we know that sine of a negative angle 
minus sine goes out, it becomes minus sine of 70 degrees. Okay, this is good enough. I mean, it's very small, but it is still not 20. I want to connect it to 20, then it becomes clear what to do, yes? Because you know that 70 is the complement to 20, and we know that sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. I also have a minus sign there. So this becomes minus cosine of 20 degrees. So that is good. So the first item is already connected to the angle 20 degrees. I will do the same thing here. So what should I do there? Cosine of 290 degrees. I'm not saying that this is the only way of doing it, but that's one way. You might find different ways of producing 20 degrees out of 1,010 degrees. That's also okay. So for example here, what can I do? I can write cosine of 360 degrees minus 70 degrees. 360 degrees minus 70 is this one. What is the benefit of that? Because this is the period of cosine. I can eliminate that, so it becomes cosine of minus 70 degrees. But cosine of a negative angle is the cosine of the positive one. And then I want to connect it to 20 degrees. Then immediately I would say that cosine of 70 degrees is sine of 20 degrees because 20 and 70 are complementary. So that's also good. So the answer to this second part is just simply... Uh, sine of 20 degrees. I will do something similar to this one. So sine of 610 degrees, that's up to you how you want to go. For example, you can say two times 360 degrees, which is what? 720, and then go backwards 110 degrees. That's one option. But you can say, I don't know. For example, let me just do it like this. I can write it as one full circle plus 250 degrees. Am I right? If I add them up, it becomes 610 degrees. Again, I'm not saying that this is the only way. This is one way. And this is the period of cosine. This is eliminated. So this becomes sine of 250 degrees. Yes? But sine of 250 degrees, I want to somehow connect it to 20 degrees. If you are good with 10 to 170 degrees, you can do it immediately, but if you don't have those formulas in your memory, you can do it in some steps. So here I can write it as 180 degrees plus 70 degrees, because this angle can be written in that way. But what is this one? And so if you want to imagine the unit circle, if here is 70 degrees, for example, if that is 70 degrees, then 180 degrees more will be exactly the opposite point. And it is immediately clear that the y coordinates, y, y coordinates, because I'm dealing with sine, so I am interested in y coordinates, y coordinates of these two points are opposite. So this means that the sine of this angle is equal to the negative of the sine of the other one. But again, I want to connect it to 20 degrees, I've used the same trick. Sine of 70 degrees is cosine of 20 degrees, and then I have a minus sign here. So that is the answer to the third part. So you see that I am connecting all these angles to cosine or sine of only 20 degrees, and I have information to use about 20 degrees. Finally, the last one is 470 degrees cosine. So it becomes cosine of 470 degrees. Uh, what can I write here? Um, I can write 360 degrees plus 110, for example. Okay, so I can write cosine of 360 degrees plus 110. But the period of cosine is this one, so this is eliminated. It becomes cosine of 110 degrees. But cosine of 110 degrees, it becomes cosine, uh, I don't know, 100. 80 minus 70 degrees, but cosine of a supplement is negative of the cosine, and it is not hard to see, because if you have an angle and if you have its supplement, the supplement will be the exact opposite point, so don't look at this awful picture. If you do it precisely, these two points will be on the same height, so it means that the y coordinates of these two points are the same, but the x coordinates are opposite. So this becomes minus cosine of 70 degrees, but cosine of 70 degrees is sine of 20 degrees. Yes, but I have also a minus sign here, so that is the answer to the last bit. 
Okay, so now what I will do, I will rewrite that fraction, but I will write everything in terms of the trigonometric functions of only angle 20 degrees. So the question mark, let me call it the question mark, is equal to. Okay, so let me show you. So instead of this A, I put A, but instead of sine of 1010 degrees, I can put minus cosine of 20 degrees. So if you don't mind, let me put the minus sign here and just write cosine of 20 degrees. The next one is B times cosine of 290 degrees. Cosine of 290 degrees is sine of 20 degrees. So this becomes plus B sine of 20 degrees. Okay? And then what I do here, uh, instead of this one, I can put minus cosine 20 degrees. I also have an A here, so it becomes minus A cosine 20 degrees. And then B cosine of 470 degrees, it becomes minus B sine 20 degrees. Okay. But then I have to find a way to get rid of these sine and cosine because according to the problem, I should be able to express it in terms of A and B only. So what I will do, I will try this combination, this type of combinations are famous in trigonometry, you know. The trick is to divide everything, for example, by cosine of 20 degrees. This will allow you to get rid of the cosine ones. And then what happens, sine ones will change to tangent ones, okay? And if you know information about tangent, your problem is solved. Do I know information about tangent? Yes, of course. What can I do? I can divide both sides. I can divide both sides of this relation by AB cosine 20 degrees, okay? What I'm going to do, I, go, I want to divide the left side and the right side by that expression. If I divide this by that, A and A are gone, yes? So what is left for me uh, is, what is left for me is sine over cosine becomes tangent of 20 degrees divided by, because when I divide A and A are gone, but this B will be in the denominator. On the right hand side, when I divide this by that, cosines are gone, b's are also gone, I will get 1 over a. But now I want to find tangent 20 degrees, I multiply everything. Uh, might be that was a little bit strange way I did it, so let me not divide by any b. Yes, why should I divide by any b? I just divide by a cosine 20, sorry for that. Yeah, that was a little bit of a stupid way of doing things, yes? So let me divide everything by this. I don't know even why I did that. So I, dis I divide this by that. A's are gone. Sine over cosine becomes tangent. And then I divide this by that. Cosines are gone. And B over A is left. So I understand that this expression can be written in this form. And I am on the safe side. Of course... Now you understand that they should tell you that A and B are not zero, but they don't need to tell you because you already know that neither A nor B is zero. Because if B is zero, okay, and then it means A should also be zero because sine of 20 degrees and cosine of 20 degrees are not zero. They are in the first quadrant. They know neither the X nor the Y coordinate is zero, okay? So if B is zero, then automatically A is also zero, and then this becomes zero over zero, which is not defined. So from the problem, you understand that neither A nor B is equal to zero. So we are on the safe side. I go back here. I divide the numerator and denominator by cosine of 20 degrees. That's, when I do that, this by cosine 20, it's only minus A. But this one divided by cosine 20, it becomes tangent 20 times B. And I will do the same thing. When I divide this by cosine 20, this is gone, minus A is left. When I divide this by cosine 20, it becomes tangent 20. I have also a minus B. But then I can continue one step more because now I know tangent 20 according to the given, uh, what is given the problem is this. So it's minus A plus B times B over A divided minus A minus B times B over A. Yes? And I multiply the numerator and denominator by minus A. 
If I multiply this by minus a, it becomes positive a squared. If I multiply this by minus a, this becomes minus. The a that I multiply will cancel this a, but b times b becomes b squared. If I multiply this by minus a, it becomes a squared. If I multiply this by minus a, this minus becomes plus, and the a that I multiply will cancel this one, and then b times b is b squared. And that is exactly what we are supposed to get in this problem. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.